The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome, art enthusiasts of the Bronx and beyond. My name is Cristina Pagan, and I will be your host for this episode of A Life in Art. On this show, we will bring you engaging and personal conversations with artists with whom you may not be familiar. People who have been working on their craft for at least a decade are at a crossroads where passion meets necessity. We'll discuss creativity and inspiration with our guest artists, but also find out what it takes to balance the struggles of practical life while pursuing their passions. Our guest today is a percussionist, dancer, and teacher from a musical family that surrounded him with Afro-Caribbean rhythms and Puerto Rican folkloric music. He's an accomplished conga, bongo, and timbales player. He's performed with many artists, including Los Pleneros de la 21, Son del Barrio, and is currently playing percussion with multiple Grammy nominee, Bobby Sanabria. Today, we learn about Nelson Matthew Gonzalez's life in art. <laughs> And we're on set with Nelson Matthew Gonzalez. Well, thanks for coming on the show. No, likewise. Thank you for having me. So I, I've, I've known you for a few years now, yes. on and off. And I, I knew you before I knew you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I was a, a bit of a Puerto Rican folklore groupie yeah. following around some bands. <laughs> I can't, you know, I'm not going to lie. I knew what it's I was. Okay. Um, and then we danced together with the yes. Danza Fiesta. Yes, we did. So we'd like to start off, you know, um, where were you born? Where'd you grow up? Well, I was born here in the South Bronx in, uh, by Westchester, Jackson Avenue. Mm -hmm. Been there my whole life, so I imagine I'm raised, born and raised in the Bronx, but of course we're Puerto Rican parents and grandparents, mm -hmm. of course, with that background. And we mentioned in the intro that you have a musical family. Yes, my grandfather, uh, Bienvenido Benny Ayala, wow. who's a craftsman, his nickname Benny who's a craftsman, planero, composer, so I learned most of my stuff from him. I started with him, of course, mm -hmm. with the bomba and plena, and then of eventually I kept going, taking classes with the planeros, with their workshop, their kids' workshop, mm -hmm. then started taking percussion classes at 11 at Boys Harbor, mm -hmm. which I had a scholarship, the Tito Puente scholarship, and I was I studied for 10 years mm -hmm. there. And then eventually at 16, I started professionally with Zone Barrio, and then from there, it just took off. Wow, at 16, you were already a professional. Yeah. <laughs> That's playing, incredible. Playing a professional band, uh, but imagine in Danza Fiesta, I've been with them since, you since were I was seven. Right. So I was already dancing professionally at age seven, but playing as 16 profession. That's crazy. So the music, was it always plena and bomba or was it salsa? Was it something else at home? It was a, always a little bit of both, but mostly uh, mostly bomba and plena because that's what I was always drawn to. And then of course my grandfather being 
with the Planeros at one time, then mm -hmm. with uh, Rincón Criollo, Los Intantanos de la Plena. So I was always with the old timers that would play Plena and then with Bomba. So <laughs> it was always a on and off stage of is either Bomba and Plena or a little bit of salsa in the house and stuff like that. Is there another uh, kind of music that really hits you at home that you want to play or? No, I, I have a, a, a love for a little bit of everything, you know, the folkloric, the Cuban, Cuban music, uh, Afro-Dominican music, Afro-Puerto Rican, so a little bit of everything. A little Afro everything. Yeah. <laughs> Just put a little Afro on it, you're yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you started dancing before you started playing or playing before dancing? Playing before dancing, yeah, because I started off with the drum right away with my grandfather at the age of four. Mm. So already he gave me my first little pandereta and stuff <laughs> that was actually signed to uh, Petra Cepeda mm -hmm. when the Cepedas first came here to New York. And so I always played that. And then, of course, later on, then I started dancing. I learned how to dance at home mm -hmm. or everything from the house. <laughs> and then eventually I met Jilla, which kn she knew my grandfather for years. Mm -hmm. And then she was a little, oh, he's small. But then when she saw when I started dancing, she was like, wow. wow. He's got talent. Yeah, he <laughs> got some talent. <laughs> and imagine I've been with her for now 15 years. Wow. That's, that's a long time. Yeah, 15 years. So you're aging yourself. Yeah, yeah now I know. we know how old I you know. are. <laughs> 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 All right, so playing before dancing, but you love, do you love to dance, right? Yeah, I love to dance. What is it, ab what is it about the music that calls you to dance? It's always the, just the, the main, the feeling of that vibration of the drum and how everything coordinates with the drum, you mm -hmm. know? How one step is synchronized with the drum. Mm -hmm. What, either if it's a tone, is a slap, and this is where it's based off what we say, the clave. The clave is the heartbeat of the, of the music. So everything just falls with that, and I'm like, wow, okay, I put two and two together, and it just comes naturally. That's, that's pretty incredible. So. For people who don't know, what is bomba and what is plena? Well, bomba and plena is the, the folk music of the island of Puerto Rico, of course. Bomba being the oldest, being at least 500 plus, almost one of the oldest living drummings that you could do. And then plena, that is a little bit younger. It's 100 and plus a little bit. So that's more younger. But of course, it all has everything with the Af uh, African influence of coming from Africa into the Caribbean islands through the Spaniards and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a uh, bomba and plena just in a small. In a nutshell. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's funny because I, I personally didn't know much about bomba and plena growing up. I grew up in Queens, but mm -hmm. I have Puerto Rican parents, but it was mostly salsa and all that kind of exactly. stuff. And I feel like I, I didn't learn about that until I was older, and I think it's really great that you were surrounded by it and you grew up with that. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a certain respect for your history and, oh, your, of course. and your people, right? Yes, most definitely, especially, you know, a lot of um, people in my generation don't know about their own culture. And that was one thing I noticed. I'm like, wow, people, I mentioned it to other people, and they're like, oh, what's that? I'm like, that's your history, that's your culture. <laughs> This is what we actually live off, you know, mm -hmm. and especially the uh, the mountain music, the seis, you mm -hmm. know, that has the cuatro and the bongo and stuff like that. That's our music. That's our real mountain music. Mm -hmm. And besides the bomba and plena too. So that's something that I really cherish knowing at a young age and then mm -hmm. able to educate others that you could say that I have students that are older and didn't know about the music until later on in life. And what is it, what is it, how does it make you feel when you're able to like share this information and enlighten people? Oh, it, it's, it feels great. And especially that, that people are like, wow, you know so much at a young age. I'm like, yeah, I was raised with it. And you know, sometimes we can't blame parents because sometimes the parents don't know about their own culture because they weren't surrounded about it. They were like, oh, I used to hear it, but didn't really get deep into it. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of the difference, but I still, have that enlightenment to tell them and explain everything and they're like wow I didn't know about that so much information mm -hmm. from our little island that we have because right there's a lot of history that we don't oh, even yeah. know about exactly even people on the island barely know about exactly it's crazy so we're gonna leave it there we're gonna come back and talk a little bit more about your schooling and what you're doing so we have to take a quick break but we'll be right back with more about Nelson when we return people think I'm trash 
they're on. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen, and I am your dividend. Welcome back to A Life in Art. We're here with percussionist and dancer Nelson Matthew Gonzalez. So we left off with you talking about uh, sharing your culture with people. So you do that with Los Plereros, right? Yes. And where else? Uh, mainly there um, because I uh, teach there every Saturdays, the adult class now. I used to do the kids, but now I do the adults. I teach the drumming for the adults, and sometimes I do the dancing. Nice. Yeah. Because I remember there was Alex who was doing mm -hmm. the drumming. Yeah. That's you. Oh, my now goodness. That's me now. You're stepping up in the world all yeah. over the place. Because mm -hmm. you also mentioned that now you're on the board for, uh, for Danza, Danza Fiesta. Fiesta. Yep. So what does that mean? You've gone from little child dancer to now a board member. Yeah, board member and, and musical director for the band, too. Wow. <laughs> what, do you, what do you have to do? Now is just uh, make certain decisions of how the company could rise up. And mm -hmm. it's coming up. Imagine we've been together already going on 16 years. Mm -hmm. And now we, we're trying to expand the group, uh, see if we can have hopefully a, a dance school, a little bit of a music school, wow. and just uh, go out into the community, especially in the Bronx, and show uh, the young generation, the upcoming kids that are coming about their culture. It doesn't necessarily need to be, they need to be Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. but just understand you know, do some research. When you get older, understand uh, this is folk. This is the Puerto Rican tradition. Now, if you're Honduran, look for your traditions. If you're Dominican, look into the your Dominican and Haitian uh, background and stuff like that. So we really want to portray that and really help the kids understand about culture and tradition, which sometimes gets lost. Which is really cool because there, I mean, there are a schools for Greeks like there's Greek school yeah, and you know there, exactly. there are other people who celebrate their culture and find out what it means to be mm -hmm. that and we don't necessarily have those kinds of things here and it's really mm. great to have that option yeah and I, I actually saw um, there is a a Honduran school I think in Queens oh, as okay. well that they're teaching their their folkloric stuff there and 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 Peruvian as well so there, it's all coming together, and it's oh, great yeah, to mostly. even like just learn about everybody else's culture. Because Danza Fiesta doesn't just do Puerto Rican folklore, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, we we do all of Latin America. Of course, we pay attention more to the Puerto Rican folk because mm -hmm. that's uh, uh, Miss Pantoja's dream. But of course, she didn't limit herself to not learn different styles of dance. You know, we we used to do. You remember mm -hmm. we used to do a lot of, uh, we used to do Peru Negro, we used mm -hmm. to do Mexico, uh, Mexico, we used to do uh, everything, Ecuador and everything else like that. And it was really interesting because I learned a lot too. And I'm like, wow, they're different but similar at the same time to our, our culture. Mm -hmm. So that was a really big impact, which it opened my mind really a lot too. So you said you went to Boys Harbor, you've been part of Los Planeros, Danza Fiesta. Did you continue your schooling? Where did you go to school? Yes, I did continue my schooling. I went to Boricua College. Mm -hmm. What did you study? I studied business administration. Oh, that's different. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I have my bachelor's in business administration mm -hmm. now. Uh, I've realized in the music scene especially um, that a lot of people don't understand the business side and the amount of work that it takes to put a production together. And I really wanted to learn that. So that's why I put myself through business 
at first they were like, oh, you should be a music teacher. I'm like, I already teach. I'm like, I don't need that again. Mm -hmm. I was like, I think I should go into something else that is going to be a little bit more productive and I can understand how people negotiate when it comes to setting up a, a big concert, mm -hmm. setting up certain things for different artists, hiring different bands and stuff like that. So that's that was the main reason why I took business administration, to learn all of that. That's a very practical approach. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that's interesting that you bring that up. I don't think we've ever talked about that before on this show, about the work that it takes to make art. Yeah. Because it's beautiful to do the things that you love. Exactly. But and you said that you you know you're busy doing this. You're going here. You're going there. Mm -hmm. And you love that. But there's a business that goes behind it. Exactly. There's work. Can you talk a little bit about the work? Yeah, the work is is really is a massive thing. There's a lot of things that go through it. Um, imagine contacting uh, artists, contacting uh, production managers for stages, mm -hmm. uh, stage plots. Uh, how many people do you have? We need their information, we need this, we need that. There's so many things that I did not know uh, until I started really digging in. Especially I started working with the Ploneros in their office. I worked the whole year mm -hmm. as an assistant, as an administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. And I learned, wow, the promotion, how you have to promote, uh, you make the flyers, uh, getting together with the graphic designers. Okay, this is what we like, this is what we don't like. Okay, now let's put it out there. Contacting people, people denying your cause, people <laughs> avoiding <unidentified>. you. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it's really interesting. I was like, wow, the amount of work that I give so much respect to everybody that makes this um, their living. You know, just doing that, mm -hmm. just the production and promoting, is is a really really hard uh, job. You know. Right. Really hard job, and mm -hmm. especially when you work with a nonprofit organization too, right. looking for grants, mm -hmm. trying to get the amount of money that you need to make this production happen, just to do probably one or two shows. That's pretty crazy. Yep. And so, like you worked with Los Pleneros, the, the Danza Fiesta, which is a nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. They're all nonprofit, but you're also an independent freelancer, so you do your own promotion and your own work. Yes. Yes. How is that different? Well, it's different now. Be, um, well, I just started my own corporation. Mm -hmm. I have Gonzalez Music LLC. Yay. I just started with that. It's been already a couple months. It's been almost eight months already mm -hmm. since I started with it. I'm still working on it, but I'm now I'm promoting myself because now I've been doing a lot of independent stuff. People actually call me to do certain parties, to do certain clubs, events. So I'm like, okay, now I had to put people under my wing to hire. So I'm like, okay, now I had to. I had to do invoices, I had to do contracts. I'm like, okay, now this is a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. But also I learned as a freelance musician that, okay, I understand what the leaders have to go through mm -hmm. just to have this process happen. Mm -hmm. So that was a really big thing. You have a different perspective. Of yeah. Because like, you were the guy who was like, oh, man, why do we have to do this again? We should have had this, and exactly. why don't we have that? And now you know where it comes from and how hard it is to even get the basics. Mm -hmm. So that's a good place to leave off for now. we got to take another break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more from Nelson right after this. Today, one out of every four American kids is Hispanic. Many of the future doctors who will care for us, the scientists and entrepreneurs of our country can be your kids. And the Hispanic Scholarship Fund helps you prepare, plan, and pay for your kids' college education. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Uh, how can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. ExploreUnderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. 
Teachers today are finding new ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. And we're back on A Life in Art with Nelson Matthew Gonzalez, a.k.a. Matthew, <laughs> right? You have so many names yes. everywhere. So you are also now uh, working with, you, I mean, you've, you've performed in Bomplenaso, which is a, the biannual Puerto Rican festival yes. at Ostos, but now you're also going to be involved in planning it, sort of, kind of, maybe. Yeah, a little bit of it. What, what, is it, what does it take to plan something like that or be involved with? Uh, it's, a, it's a process and a half. Imagine, I know uh, John Macri, the director of Hostos, finally uh, taking over Wally Echko's, um spot mm -hmm. as the director, had to go through uh, getting the funding for this project, for the event, mm -hmm. and then also now able to contact the different uh, groups now to invite from Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And this year we're actually trying to the, the theme, if I'm not mistaken, is about uh, the young generation, mm -hmm. the generation that is coming up. So we're trying to focus on bringing the new groups in Puerto Rico to New York mm -hmm. for this event. Mm -hmm. That's really uh, going to be a great impact. And now organizing, like trying to help out like the different groups, suggest what groups could work for Bon Plan Asso and everything else. Mm -hmm. You've traveled all over the place yeah. performing can you where where have you gone performing uh i've been to california at least four or five times been to texas been to bermuda mm -hmm. been to martinique guadalupe the farthest i've been is thailand wow yeah playing playing with los planeros with, with los planeros yeah so what was that like how do you bring puerto rican folklore to thailand Th that was something <laughs> that it landed on their laps some they contacted them they were like we have this uh world uh festival mm -hmm. and we would like uh someone from the u.s were um were your music the puerto rican music and i was like wow that's interesting so we come we went to thailand and it was something outstanding. Of course, Bangkok, we went to Bangkok. It was the capital. Mm -hmm. And we was like, wow, this is like 42nd. But of course, we have Thai people. Hotter. Yeah, hotter, <laughs> of course. But I was like, wow. And of course, they didn't understand what we were saying. So everything was being translated. But, and at first, it was a little awkward because we weren't sure how they were engaged and react to the music. Mm -hmm. But, after that, I think the first show, they really reacted well and they enjoyed themselves. That's great. I mean, that must be interesting. So you're doing everything in Spanish or in English? In, in, Spanish. in Spanish. So everything was in Spanish and they were translating that to Thai? Yes. Wow. And then did they get up and dance with you or was it just yeah, playing no, music? Yeah, no, they got up and danced. We, we engaged with them to, to dance and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But of course, it was a big production, so it was a little bit... Uh, on a big stage, so but we try to interact with them as much as we can and explain what's going on and how, what are we doing? First playing plena, then playing bomba, and it's funny. There's videos of that that you can find on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So of us performing and me playing and dancing, of course. That's gotta be awesome, man. Uh, so what do you what do you see happening in your future? What is it that you want to do with your music and your art? No, of course, I want to play for the rest of my life as much as I can. <laughs> but um, seriously, in the future, I really would like to open my own little music school. Mm -hmm. So, and especially in the Bronx, that's my main goal. Why, why particularly in the Bronx? Well, since I, I'm a Bronx native, that's right. one. But also what I see, I had to travel all the way to Manhattan to learn these things. And I didn't have these opportunities in the Bronx. Of course, I had La Casita, mm -hmm. but not an actual former music school in the Bronx that mm -hmm. they could, they specialize in Latin music mm -hmm. or in jazz or whatever you want. Uh, but that's why I'm like, wow, they don't have that in the Bronx. They have all of that in, in Manhattan, some in Brooklyn and some in Queens, but nothing in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So now, and I see how the, Bron the Bronx is expanding at this moment. Right. You see all these new buildings. It's like, wow, I didn't, I remember this part was abandoned. Now they put a big complex on it. I'm right. like, wow. I was like, if the Bronx is growing, why can't our music grow in the Bronx at the same time? And, you know, cultivate the talent exactly. and the youth here too. It's awesome. So I'm trying to figure out what, what my next question is. I 
completely left my head. <laughs> <laughs> so with the music school, and do you see that happening within the next 10 years, maybe farther down the road? Maybe I'm trying to do it as soon as I can, you mm -hmm. know. But of course, uh, I need to get the funding for it. I have to look for the right place for it. And of course, now when my corporation is going to help me, now I can expand to uh, looking with other people to talk to them, probably be partners with to expand. Mm -hmm. Then also maybe also help uh, Danza Fiesta and being part of that too. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can merge the schools together, have a dance school and a music school at the same time. That'd be really great. So, yeah, so you know, there's a lot of uh, ideas in the air mm -hmm. right now that we have to put on paper and see if it can actually happen. Actually get some money exactly. thrown, your, thrown your way. Yep. So, it, we we like to talk to the show on the show about like um, what it takes to not just follow your passion because it's it's lovely to have an idea and love to be an artist oh, and course. whatever but there's the practicality behind it so mm -hmm. what does it take for you to be you know to follow your passions but still pay your bills what's your schedule like my schedule right now it's uh, promote yourself you have to really promote yourself you have to study you have to practice on a daily basis. You you know me. <laughs> <laughs> you see you see hands. my hands. <laughs> Just look at my hands alone. <laughs> I, I work a lot. I'm I'm fortunate enough and, and I thank God that I get to work at least four or five times a week. You know. Mm -hmm. And even on the slow season I could work probably two, three times a week. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunate enough because I promoted myself and then also a lot of people have recommended me. Right. for a lot of things they're like no he's responsible you have a reputation yeah i have right. a great reputation that a lot of people uh recommending me for a lot of stuff that's why i've got to these places you know working with bobby now mm -hmm. working with uh these big artists uh dominican artists the salsa artists the recent one was richie ray and bobby cruz wow that i played at mj pack with them this past august nice so that was something so now the good word is putting in for me because I'm doing what I have to do. I'm practicing. I sound good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm also, I read music, so that helps me. Mm -hmm. You know, that I could just go to a gig and, like, just read the music right then and there. Mm -hmm. So, and, and a lot of people see that. And also, it's just good character, you know, how you uh, present yourself, you know. The just, hustle and that grind is real, though, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. The competition in the music business is very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort communicating promoting yourself but promoting is yourself that you show that you're humble enough you just want to play you know and then you show that you have that good character in you to just expand and just want to make good music you know you don't want to make enemies you want to make friends you want to make colleagues you want right. to everything in, in this picture is just um it's just something great that you just want to promote yourself and also push the music the, and the world is so small. The music world is so small. Everyone uh, knows everybody. So exactly. it's always good to make sure you leave on good terms, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it seems we run out of time. Thank you so much for joining no us. No problem. Anytime. Thank Thanks you. Thanks to Nelson for sharing his life in art with us. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. We want to encourage you to connect with us on social media. Visit us on Facebook and YouTube at A Life in Art and Instagram and Twitter at A Life in Art TV. We'll be back with more stories from emerging artists when we return with A Life in Art. We finally bought a place. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. By the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. How is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org.